Um, hello everyone, happy Folk Life Festival. And thank you so much, Secretary Munch, for inviting me to join you today and for that very kind introduction. I'm also so proud to be here with my Pueblo sister, Cynthia Chavez Lamar. Uh, it's wonderful to know that she is here uh, from my home state of New Mexico. And um, this is always a wonderful place to be. Uh, so I'm happy to join our friends and partners across the Smithsonian Institute who connect the American public with cultures, traditions, and life ways from around the world. I'm grateful for your dedication to telling these stories. And that's something that we have in common. At the Department of the Interior, we're committed to telling our country's stories as well, even when they're difficult. I'm grateful to my colleagues who come to work every day with that mission at top of mind. Many of them are within the National Park Service under the leadership of Director Chuck Sams, who I know you'll hear from shortly. As America's storyteller, our national park system helps preserve and honor important individuals and chapters in our history. That includes places like the Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument in Illinois and Mississippi, which President Biden designated last summer. I had the honor of joining the family of Emmett and Mamie Till Mobley um, and community members during a celebration of the monument last year, and now three locations will help tell the story of Emmett's life and of Mamie's bravery in the wake of her son's horrific murder. Bravery that helped awaken our country to injustices that we can no longer ignore. Places like this tell the stories that must be told by those who live them. And that's why President Biden signed an executive order earlier this year that challenges us to think bigger about how we tell our country's story through the eyes of the women who have shaped it. The executive order charges the National Park Service with undertaking a comprehensive review to assess what they are already doing and, importantly, what more they could be doing to recognize women's history. The service plans to investigate the stories of women and girls spanning pre-colonial contact to temporary America and their roles in countless professions. It will also take an intersectional approach to include women from all background, communities, and identities, from race and gender identity to tribal affiliation, age, and income status. Because each story matters, each story is important. Some folks have tried to keep these stories from being told. Nowhere is that more obvious than with the harmful policies that were designed to eradicate indigenous people in this country. When I announced the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative in 2021, I didn't realize it would become a legacy issue for our department. Our goal was noble and mighty, to unravel the intergenerational trauma that has plagued our communities since the start of this horrific era an era that saw indigenous children, including my grandparents, torn from their families and taken to government-sponsored schools that stripped them of their languages, their cultures, and their ways of life. The very things that you will celebrate this year. Now in our fourth year, the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative has grown. We began with an investigative report that our Indian Affairs team, led by Assistant Secretary Brian Newland, pour their hearts into. This is the first time in the federal government has researched the details of these schools, the children who attended, the impacts their assimilation policies had on those children, their families, and the larger communities. Volume two of that report will be released soon. Then we went on a road to healing, a year-long tour across the country to bear witness to the many survivors and descendants of boarding school policies. This was such a powerful way to share stories, to cry together, to begin to heal, but also to chart a path to create an oral history for future generations. Now with funding from the Mellon Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities, we've launched an oral history project to document the first person experiences of the American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian children who attended the federal boarding school system. We are honored to work with the Smithsonian to share expertise and resources 
in pursuit of a long-term exhibit that will allow first-person survivor stories to be told long after the secretary or I are in these positions. We have so much more to do to reconcile this painful chapter in our nation's history, but our progress is real. Of course, this progress hinders on not just telling our stories, but celebrating the beauty and bounty of our communities, something that we are accomplishing right here with this year's Folk Life Festival, focused on indigenous voices of the Americas. Every day that we celebrate, every day that we dance and sing and pray, we strengthen the bonds that assimilation policies sought to break among Native people. Thank you for telling our stories and keeping them alive. I'm so thrilled that so many of you are here today. And I know that you're in for an incredible time as you explore the stalls and vendors that this year's festival has to offer. Dawa F. Thank you all so much for having me today and enjoy the festival. Thank you.